Hello everyone. This video is going to take you through the steps that are required to change your password in the Ayrshire College um, system. We strongly recommend that you change your password. If you remember, the first time you logged into our system, you used a password that was based on your date of birth. It's not a good idea to keep that because somebody could easily guess your date of birth. So let me show you how to change your password. Okay, so the first thing I would like you to do is go to this website, www.ayrshire.ac.uk. I'd like you to click um, on the word students, and I've indica indicated it here on the screen. Now, halfway down that menu, there's a link that says student support, and I'd like you to click that. Okay, so if you've done that correctly, you'll see a screen similar to this. And what I'd like you to do is scroll down until you see the keyboard that I've highlighted here, um, and it says ICT on it. Okay, so click it and you're brought to the ICT support section. So I'd like you to scroll down slightly and you'll see this ICT guides. So we're looking for a link that's titled change your password. So if you scroll down, there it is, I've highlighted it in this screen. And I'd like you to click in there. Now, there's a step-by-step -step guide and you can follow that or you can just continue to watch this video. So what I'm going to do is, you can see in step two, there's a link there. It's going to take me to a website that's going to allow me to change my password. So I'm going to click on it. And I've got three options, and I'm going to go for the option that says change password on the right-hand side, and I've indicated that here on the screen. Okay, so you're now going to be asked what account you want to use, and I'm going to use this fake account that I've got for a student. So I'm going to click on that. Uh, so maybe you may be asked to enter your um, email address for that student or for yourself. So I'm going to put it in. Uh, I'm then going to click Next. It's asking me now for the password. So I'm going to put in my current password, the one that has my date of birth, or the most recent one that you're using. I'm then going to click Sign In. Now, if you've done it correctly, you see this screen. So the first thing that I need to do is put in my old password. Well, in this instance, I'm going to put in the one that I used to log in for the student in the very first instance, which was based around their date of birth. So you enter your current password, and then what I'd like you to do is think about what your new password is going to be. And I would suggest that you write that down on paper and take a picture of it. Taking a picture will help you easily locate the password if you forget it. And forgetting it is quite common. So take, take a moment to take a picture of your new password written down somewhere. OK, so a little bit of advice on creating your new password. Inside this box, you'll see step six. And it says, uh, enter a new different password into the create new password box. Now. Here's where it's easy for us to go wrong. You must have eight between eight and 12 characters in the password. You must include a number and a capital letter. You can include a symbol if you like. But what you can't do, it can't be your date of birth. And importantly, it can't be um, the same as a password you've used before. And it can't really be your name or a name that it could pick up. Um, because look at this example down here. Let's say I'm typing a password called uh, Davy 21. That's not going to work because there's no capital in it. There's less than eight characters. And it actually also contains the word Davy. And the computer's clever enough to be able to pick up that that's quite a weak password because people would be able to guess it because it's a complete word. So look what I do in the, the example below that's green. Uh, I put a capital D for Davy. I changed the A in David to a 4, and I added a little symbol at the end. And that just makes it more difficult for somebody else to guess. Now, again, the important thing here is write that down before you put it in um, to the, the box for create new password. Because you've got to re-enter it, and you want to make sure that you're getting it right twice. Otherwise, you, you end up going around in circles and try to remember what you put in. OK, when you click. Uh, confirm, I'll just go back. When you click Submit, it is. Um, you should see a screen like that. And if you do see this screen, then you've done it. You've changed your password. So what you can do is 
you can log out, and I would strongly suggest that if you're using a kind of public laptop in the college or somewhere. And obviously, if you're in a private one, you're using your own um, computer at home, you don't necessarily need to log out all the time because you're the only one looking at it. OK, and that's really what the next window will say if you decide to log out. Um, you really need to decide what the best choice is for you. If you're using a public laptop or computer, definitely log out. You don't want the next person coming and sitting down and being able to read your emails. If you're doing it at home, then you just need to decide um, whether you want to log out or not. OK. Once you log out, you'll see a window, you'll see some activity in the screen when it says, hang on a moment while we send you out, and then that's that. And that's the end. OK, so we strongly recommend that you change your password from the initial one, which is based on your date of birth, to something more secure. Because ultimately, it's about keeping your details and your personal details safe. And the safest way is to put a more complex password in. OK, hope this helped. Thank you. Bye-bye.